Welcome to my presentation on home movies. In 1999, Cartoon Network premiered two new shows on the same evening. One was called Sheep in the Big City, which was about a sheep that lived in an urban metropolis who was on the run from the military who need him for their sheep-powered ray gun. I named him that, because when he was born, he looked just like a little sheep. I don't care about Meryl Streep, sarong! Find that sheep! Well, Annihilation brings up a lot of issues. I'm not mad. I'm angry. I am an angry scientist. And the yelling. <laughs> yeah, sheep's gotta make it after all. The other show was home movies, and this was the more unusual. Whatever. I feel so unvalidated. <laughs> Home Movies is an animated sitcom first broadcast on April 26th, 1999 by Soup to Nuts on UPN and was cancelled after five episodes due to low ratings. It was picked up by Cartoon Network and subsequently finished the first series and continued for another three on the Adult Swim. Home Movies became part of a whole new genre of adult cartoons. I'm gonna make a prediction. That's what I was, yeah, that's what right, I was. Right, right, prediction. The fight is gonna be over after three punches. Hey, Small! Yeah? You suck! Man, that guy's a, what did I do to him? You suck! Uh, uh, don't film that, because then it makes me look stupid. And I don't... See you tomorrow! <sighs> Loser's Day! The series follows Brendan, Melissa, and Jason as they continuously make movies with no clear goal for the future, as children often focus on the present, all while Paula tries to be a responsible mother and Coach McGurk tries to pull the birds. Some episodes can be relatable to the trials of being a child trying to get started in a creative medium, whether it is home movies, music, singing, dancing, etc. Animated sitcoms were nothing new. The genre itself was already well underway with the early success of The Simpsons and South Park. Each of these shows demonstrated the structure of a sitcom with the added twist of surrealism that only animation can provide. The cycle of life in nature, one animal living and another one dying so that the first one can live, but the second one doesn't get that kind of a deal. It's uh oh. Oh god, that snake really got him. Oh my god. Oh, oh now it's Oh. 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 Yeah. Oh. 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 Again. The whole genre of animated sitcoms started back in the 60s under the production company Hanna-Barbera. First with the Flintstones in 1960, followed by Top Cat in 1961, and then the Jetsons in 1962. These programs showed clear homage to 50s American live-action sitcoms. And when I say that, what I mean is they put the Honeymooners in the Stone Age and did Sergeant Bilko with cats. However, in the late 90s on Cartoon Network, the schedule was often dominated by colourful, surreal, action-based programs such as Freakazoid. You want to see something strange and mystical? No! Get out of here with that watch! Lay off the poor beavers, will ya? Jeez! You're a creep! Go away! We're having a good time until you shut up, jeepers! But Home Movies was not the first of its kind. There were more adult theme jokes present in shows by David Feast, like Cow and Chicken and I Am Weasel. Corn Cob Man, there's a lot of sick people in this town. As shows like The Flintstones and Top Cat would replicate cultural relationships in the 50s, home movies would do the same for the late 90s and through the early millennium. The show had mixed reviews when first broadcast. Rob Owen of the Post-Gazette called it So lackadaisical, it's hard to imagine UPN's most recently announced target audience, young males, having any patience for the program. The entertainment value is low. But did note that McGurk's scenes in the episodes were the closest to ha-ha funny the show gets. However, journalist Phil Rosenthal of the Chicago Sun-Times commended the episode. In his review, he wrote, Rather than big laughs, it's more likely to elicit the grin of bemused recognition. It's not about sight gags or clever puns. It's not about parodying the sitcom form. This sweet air series is not always subtle, unless a child showing another how to have fun with a runny nose is intellectual. But it nicely plays off the inherent absurdities and weirdness of everyday modern life. The characters in home movies are all played by American actors, often with the same name as the character, who largely improvise their lines, resulting in the characters constantly speaking over each other and stammering when trying to form their sentences. 
This technique is known as retro scripting, in which scripts are left with low content in which the actors fill in the rest off the top of their heads. This method would eventually be incorporated into live action sitcoms like Curb Your Enthusiasm in the US and outnumbered in the UK. The show's first season was animated in a technique called squiggle vision in which the outlines deliberately wobble and backgrounds have limited use of colour. This can be argued to keep focus on the characters and not distract from the action. A similar method can be seen in the early series of Ed Ed Neddy. What else is new? Let her rip it! Crazy! <laughs> I think I hit a pipe! The other three seasons were all animated in Flash. Both Squiggle Vision and Retro Scripting are also seen in Dr. Katz, which featured real American stand-up comedians visiting Jonathan Katz and having improvised therapy sessions. Now, do you, are you able to sleep all right? I mean... I haven't slept straight through in about 15 years. Our lead character is Brendan. He is an 80-year-old filmmaker. He draws inspiration from all the characters around him, resulting in his work often reflecting his personal life. He's a control freak with an inflated sense of authority. Would you be interested in, uh, in taking my acting class? Huh. I've never been so insulted in my entire... Fine. When, when did you say it was? Melissa is the leading lady of all the movies. She's the only one with ever-present common sense, but falls very easily under pressure. She provides balance when things are going wrong for Brendan. They'll think that their father isn't a coward. Brendan, after that fight... What? I don't think you're having children. <laughs> Jason is the character used most for comic relief, voiced by comedian John Benjamin, and as the youngest regular character, he has naivety and innocence to cover up his absent-mindedness. Mr. Irvin hit me when I had... He really hit you? Because I kept picking Cradle Cap. And then Mrs. Hanneman hit, hit me when I pooed myself in class. Paula is Brendan's mother and shows all the troubles experienced by single parents. She has a job she doesn't enjoy, her son requires lots of space and attention, and through it all she still looks after a baby. The kind of relationships with Brendan's teachers, mm -hmm. I, I think I get off on a bad start, mm -hmm. and then I get off on a bad middle, and then eventually I go to a bad end. I have to take my sweater off because I'm really f***ing hot. Coach McGurk is the final regular main character and is portrayed as the epitome of drunken slobbery, misguided advice, and insensitive behaviour. He is also voiced by John Benjamin. It's not pumping up the kids so much, all right? This is bothering me. Brendan! Yeah. Move up the field! Huh? Don't stand there like an idiot! Come on! Okay. He's a goalie. He's not playing goal. Oh. Brendan! Yeah. Get out of the goal! Tim, get in goal! Other characters like Eric, Mr. Lynch, and Dwayne also added other elements to the character dynamic, respectively a male single parent to contrast to Paula, a teacher, and a teenager. Do you know Shannon? Yeah, he lives near me. What do you think of him? I think, God, he punched some kids. Man, dude. Have you ever fought Shannon? No! God! The characters are all portrayed as regular people. All of them have a sense of humor. Grandpa is really... He's gonna love it. Or hate it. He's gonna react. However, they also have insecurities. They're sometimes insensitive, malicious, misguided, irresponsible, and downright daft. Alright guys, I'm glad you got that out into the open. Tensions are high. <sighs> Brendan, you've got a big fight coming up. I hope you lose Jason. the fight, Brendan. No, you don't. Jason, yes, don't I say do. That. No, you don't. I hope you lose it and Shannon. He's not gonna beat Let me. Let him I'm drag you to the mud like he dragged me! He's not gonna win. I'm the best. Then do my interview right now! Fine, do the interview. See if I care. Well, I will do it! Well, just do it, Well, then tell Melissa to just push a thing and I'll do it! Right, Shannon dragged me in the mud. And then, um... Then, uh, Brendan is going to fight him. The show's plot lines contained many negative experiences relatable for virtually any member of its audience, like humiliation. I'd like to say one thing on top of that. Yeah? Surprise! 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 You loser! Disastrous relationships. Oh, that's for your couch and your stupid car and your golf clubs and your... Facial steamer and your 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 deodorizer, your water pick, and your mother's stupid china. Mislaid responsibility. Whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, here, kitty. Here, boy. Here, kitty. Oh, I'm in trouble. Or a bad date. So I said, you want it clean? Huh? You want it clean? You clean it. Clean it yourself. Clean it yourself. And I have not seen my mother since that point. Um... Several episodes of the show feature voices from professional stand-up comedians. <clears throat> yeah, I wish I could be happy for you, man. Why can't you be? You, you went out with her after I, me and she were finished. Oh man, don't lay it out in chronological order, then it just sounds bad. I was gonna stay overnight at my friend's house, she said you're gonna have to sleep on the floor. 
damn gravity got me again. You don't know how bad I want to sleep on the wall. Will do. Um, what, uh, casual dress or? Oh, yeah, whatever you want. 4 p.m. Okay, okay, for, uh, oh, Saturday. By the way, I'm registered at Toys R Us. <laughs> A lot of you are probably worried that I'll reproduce. <laughs> well? Bye. Dad, you just lost a client. Uh, I didn't want to work with that guy anyway. He's an ass. He's not a cheater like us. And, and, but let me be clear, by the way. I'm not saying that white people are better. I'm saying that being white is clearly better. Who could even argue? The majority of the home movie segments are shown as the finished movie. This is in order to put us in the mindset of the characters and how they work creatively. As usually Brendan is the director, it shows how his control and influence affects the work made from the group effort. The movies themselves are usually either entirely downplayed or done to the height of cinematic excellence. Maybe you should look at yourselves before you take it out on me. I'm just one monster. And when I'm gone, you'll remember me. Ow! 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 And then you'll have to look at yourselves and own up to what you've done. For isn't every man a monster? I guess he's right. I guess we're all... You see, I'm right, I'm right. No, no, I know. I so know. stop shooting. Okay. Hey, guys. Don't you realize that if you stop now, I might be able to get surgery? The home movie segments are sometimes in black and white. The most common home movie cameras at the time recorded onto VHS tape. Viewing through the eyepiece of one of these cameras would see a black and white image and only be in color in the finished video. So when the screen turns black and white, you can tell that the recording is live in the context of the scene, giving us a point of view perspective from the camera operator. The POV places the audience in the action and adds to the realism of the scene. All right, uh, you want a good start? I, what I, 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 if you want to try to hit me and I'll like block it, or I don't even know. It's out. Oh, oh Brandon. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh. <clears throat> Oh, wait a minute. Oh, Brendan, no, stay down. No, 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 no. This is called the oh. Tasmanian footlock. Oh. You cannot get out of this. Oh, God! <laughs> I'd like a copy of this, please. Um, oh. sure. Do you want VHS? Uh, VHS would oh. be perfect. Okay. Just, no, come back! I'm not finished with you. Unfortunately, the later series of home movies gradually became cheapened for the sake of gaining wider audiences. Tell me that didn't happen! That didn't happen! They reduce the realism in exchange for more cartoony characters. I got so much adrenaline Perry, in my veins Perry, right now. I got the bloodlust. Me too. I want to kill. kill. Let's kill. 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 Occasionally surreal moments. I'm not crazy. 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 And more obvious film references. Fat Gandhi, take two. The first rule of Fat Club is that you don't talk about the first rule of Fat Club. Second rule of Fat Club is, uh... So what are you guys in for? F free breakfast. I'm gonna free you, fat whale. As well as more vulgar humor. Oh, Brenda. You are my best friend. I hate you! Be good to her, Brenda. Be good to my little penny. Bastards! Whether this was the best move is up to the personal taste of the viewers. <sighs> One person's trash is another person's treasure, I suppose. I'm a moose, Double D! However, the new series gains many new fans to the show, and the fourth series finale episode Focus Grill, broadcast on April 4th, 2004, gained wide recognition. The episode received a largely positive response from reviewers. C.S. Stowbridge of The Numbers wrote that it was able to really wrap up the series in a great way and show why the characters acted the way they did, and praised it for showing some real character development. Jason Bailey considered the episode especially strong, drawing the series to a fine full circle, both structurally and thematically. Bailey concurred with Hassinger's description of it as bittersweet, writing, It's an affectionate send-off, bittersweet and kind of wonderful, and therefore perfectly in tone with this charming little show. Coach McGurk can be seen in the background of Family Guy's Blue Harvest, as John Benjamin now does the voice of Carl. In January 2009, IGN listed home movies as 28th in the top 100 best animated TV shows. The first series had more sympathetic characters, relatable circumstances, and much better comic timing. Sometimes the audience needs a refreshing change of pace from the over-the-top antics of other shows at the time, like Dexter's Laboratory. I'm gonna pop you one, DD. Children will inevitably need some more adult-themed cartoons to transcend into adult programming, and what better way to fill that transition than with something real and down-to-earth? Uh, the children usually do feel very guilty. It's my fault. I should go down with the, the cat. And, uh, I'll tell you something. We have ways mm -hmm. to deal with this. Uh, Brendan, have a lollipop. All right. That's genius. Thank you. That's Absolute a, genius. What's your favorite flavor, Brandon? 
Home movies use relatable experience, improvised humour and natural flow of speech to produce a show that gave us a nostalgic look at our upbringing as well as our attempts at being a responsible or irresponsible adult. And it's funny as well. Okay, it's over. But I want the regulars to be here tomorrow because we are going to start on a new project, okay? Oh, am I a regular? Uh, yes. I can't say irregular. <laughs> That was my presentation. Well, I gotta be honest with you right now. You know, brutally honest. You suck at this. I have learned absolutely nothing. Thank you for watching. Why don't you go wax your ass? <laughs>